What's up, YouTube? Apparently, I don't know how to center my camera, so I'm going to move it right now. This is the action figure grader, also known as John. And my unboxing video from yesterday got me thinking about my collection, and I found this one uh, in a box that I totally forgot about. Uh, this is actually my only Power of the Force figure that is in decent shape, other than the ones I showed you yesterday. And this is the 1996 Bosk. Uh, Power of the Force 2 figure, and it is autographed by the uh, actor that played Bosk in Empire Strikes Back, Alan Harris. Uh, I have a local buddy here in town that has a absolutely massive autographed Star Wars memorabilia collection. I'm talking like three or four hundred different items, and this is one that he gave me as a birthday gift uh, probably about five years ago, and it's been in my collection ever since. I totally forgot about it, but I uh, remembered it just now, and I thought I'd share that with you uh, since my unboxing video covered a few others that I've recently purchased. So, Bosk, uh, as you know, is one of the bounty hunters hired by Vader to try and track down the Millennium Falcon in The Empire Strikes Back. And he's a transdotion lizard-like being who is awfully ugly but awfully cool. Um, I always liked his original vintage figure. And... You know, unlike most of the Power of the Force 2 line, where it looks like they've been hitting the gym too hard, this one's actually not too bad. He, you know, he's actually in fairly decent proportion. And a lot of different videos out there uh, who cover, that covered the uh, Power of the Force 2 line, Bosk is usually pretty high up on their list in terms of, you know, highly rated figures. And I can see why. I mean, it's just a beautiful figure. Um, let's zoom in a little bit so you can take a look at it. Uh, I love the sculpting on it. The colors are awesome, and it's a nice homage to the original vintage figure. This has got the foil logo on the side. YouTube viewers, if anyone can correct me on this, I don't know what which variants there are out there, if any, of this Power of the Force 2 figure, but uh, whether there's a action freeze frame card or uh, a different picture, things like that, but I know that uh, this line is known for having m many, many variants, but... Uh, you know, the main reason I wanted to show you this is that, you know, it is autographed by uh, Alan Harris. And, uh, you know, the card itself is in beautiful condition, as you can see. Nice and flat, unlike my rotund belly. And here's the back of the card. Uh, this, correct me if I'm wrong again, but I don't, I don't believe this was a scene in the movie. Maybe it was. Uh, it might have been a, a, a scene that showed up briefly, but... You know, it has Bosk with his very slimy skin. That's one thing that Bosk and I do have in common, is that our, our, our skin uh, is both very slimy and kind of has a weird sheen to it. Uh, I sweat unnecessarily, just like Bosk apparently does. It also has Boba Fett in the background, IG-88, and I think that's Dengar that is, is cut off there. But uh, it has his information there, as well as a few of the other figures in that wave. Uh, that Sand Trooper is apparently, on the freeze frame card, is apparently a, a very difficult figure to find. Um, and uh, Hammerhead, we got the Death Star Gunner, we got Luke Jedi Knight. There were several variants of this figure. There was the uh, Theater Edition that was given out to patrons who went and saw the rehash of Return of the Jedi. Uh, and that one came in a brown vest, as well as one with brown vest raised rings brown vest, protruding chest, uh, something like that. So I think there's at least two or three variations of that figure, uh, both the theater edition and non-theater edition. And a couple of Jawas that came in a two-pack, a couple of vehicles. Uh, you know, this is a, a beautiful card, though, in great shape. Uh, I would be surprised if, it, you know, if I was going to send it in for grading, I would imagine that it probably would get an 80 or an 85. But one thing, I, you know, for those of you who are not familiar with um, uh, the grading process, According to AFA's website, they do not grade autographed figures unless they uh, have a certificate, certificate of authenticity and it's at one of their conventions. AFA often uh, reserves a booth at, you know, like San Diego Comic Cons and other, you know, comic conventions, things like that, special Star Wars celebration days. And if you happen to get an item autographed, particularly an action figure, uh, while at that uh, convention, you can immediately drop it off at AFA at their booth and they will grade it. But, you know, according to their website, you know, they will grade it, but they will, you know, not account for the autograph. So I, I don't see any point in getting this one um, authenticated or, or graded by the AFA because, uh, you know, I, I have no way to prove that this is, this is actually his autograph. 
I, I can tell you though that the, the gentleman that gave this to me, I have seen his collection, and it is it's pretty it's pretty amazing. So I, I know it's authentic, just given that he uh, travels for conventions. That's that's his actually his job in real life. I wish it was my job in real life, just playing with action figures all day. Believe me, it would be great. Uh, but uh, it, this is just a, a really cool gift that he gave me, and um, you know, a, a pretty priceless item. I went ahead and pulled it back out since I now have three graded figures uh, in this Star Wars line to kind of match up with it before I did not, and it just kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. But now it looks pretty darn good on my shelf. Um, but, you know, I, I just thought I'd share this because it, it's, it's such a cool figure. Um, you know, as an aside note, I made my wife watch some of my videos last night, and let's just say that she was embarrassed for me. I mean, she was embarrassed for herself, too, but mainly embarrassed for me. Uh, she just does not share the same love of action figures that, that I do. And, you know, marriages, marriages, they have peaks and they have valleys. And right now we're in a valley, and it's mainly because of this YouTube channel. But we're going to power through it. Somehow we are going to power through it. You know, she, luckily she spat out twin uh, wriggling larvae about six years ago who have now morphed into my children. And, uh, you know, I think that if she didn't need my help uh, regarding child rearing responsibilities she would have left me a long time ago for someone much better looking and much more intelligent but anyway i digress uh you know one last look at this figure i, I did want to compare him to another ungraded figure in my collection and that's the 1982 32 back uh empire strikes back original vintage bosk and uh you know i wanted you to, sh to see the differences between the two figures obviously the power of the force 2 figure is much larger uh you know wider and it's got, you know, much more detail just given the technology improvements between 82 and 1996. But this vintage figure is just, you know, I, I, one of my favorites from the Empire line. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, you can, as you can see here, the tape has come loose. And let me zoom in real quick here so you can see the top of the card. But there is heavy, heavy damage to this card. You can see where the, um, the price sticker uh, was attempted to be you know, taken off by whoever owned this before me, and quite a bit of creasing and damage there. You know, in one of my other videos, I covered the uncirculated grade uh, in more detail. To me, this is a perfect example of a uh, a carded, you know, action figure, vintage action figure that would make a great candidate for uncirculated grading. Now, there's going to be some folks out there that disagree with that and think that it would be a travesty to take this off the card given the limited supply of uh, vintage figures that are still out there, carded. And, uh, you know, people who have a budget, a tighter budget, maybe would love to have this graded uh, or just have it as is, just like it is right now in a sliding acrylic case. But, you know, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, to me, it, it's, a, it's not a candidate for AFA grading, though. I, I think at best it would probably get a 70 score, just given the heavy damage to the card. Um, you know, the, the figure itself looks great. I, I don't see any... Uh, cosmetic blemishes or uh, you know damage uh, or or paint problems from the factory and uh, let's zoom in on him again real quick so you can take a closer look at him but yeah this vintage boss is just awesome there, there were several variations there was a glossy skinned and a dull uh, olive skinned I believe also there was a toxic green light green skin almost the color of this logo here and, and what's behind uh, the figure uh, it's it's a very very bright head that is it goes for quite a bit of money. I've I've seen a few of them graded that that uh, at least the sellers think very highly of them. They were trying to fetch uh, over four thousand dollars for them. But uh, this is just a really cool uh, figure. There's I believe that there's a uh, three or four different variations for for his head. Um, but this card is 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 pretty mangled. Um, not terrible, but, I, you know, again, I, I don't see the point in sending him in for grading as is. There's quite a bit of damage here, as you can see. Uh, maybe you can't, but you can kind of see the heavy, the heavy wear there. And then across the top, there's quite a bit of damage. But, you know, I, you know it, at best, it would probably get about a 70. It probably wouldn't sell for much more. Uh, not that I, I'm going to sell it, but it probably wouldn't sell for, the, for much more graded versus ungraded, just given the, the heavy damage to the card. But... Whether this goes in for an uncirculated grade or not, I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't decided that yet, but I did think that give, given that it's in my collection, I thought I'd show the two of them next to each other. Anyway, that's all I have. I, I just thought it would be a quick video uh, showing Bosk in all his glory. 
Um, I think he does have one line in Empire Strikes Back where the Imperial commander kind of calls them bounty hunter scum, and he goes like, rawr, rawr, rawr. it sounds like he's gargling dead gerbils. It really does, but... Uh, oh, one other quick note I wanted to point out is that for those of you who are into the books, the Expanded Universe books, there is an awesome trilogy uh, about the Bounty Hunter Guild uh, that is a, is a highly recommended reading. Some of the Expanded Universe reading is not very good. It's, it's very, very poorly written, but that trilogy is great. It really focuses on Boba Fett. It talks about him surviving the Sarlacc Pit, uh, you know, in terms of the old canon. And uh, Bosk you know, he, he plays the son of the leader of the Bounty Hunter Guild, and he eventually does eat his father, which I guess is a tradition for the Transdotians, according to Star Wars canon. So it's a, it's a really a highly recommended trilogy to read uh, in the event that any of you are into the books, if you haven't read them already. So anyway, I'm getting off on tangents. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments below, and I'll be back soon.